Hey guys, and uh, welcome to another video. And um, as promised, I'm going to go through how to create your own home remote dashboard. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create them in little bite-sized chunks. So rather than a long video, that's probably an hour or so long, um, I'm just gonna do it in small, like 10, 15 minute chunks. So that means it will be easy to follow and easy to do. And also uh, it just means that you don't have to keep uh, scrubbing um, to find out the part that you want to get to. And so let's get started, shall we? So first things first, this is a Windows based program. So you need to make sure that you have a Windows machine. Um, as you can see, I've got a Mac so I will I basically install Windows in virtualization software so um, do whichever way you need to do it uh, get a hold of a Windows machine and go to the home remote and click on downloads and then just download the designer the apps themselves are on either Microsoft, uh, so Windows Store, or Google Play App Store, or Amazon App Store. Um, the prices vary depending on which platform you want to use it for. So once you've downloaded the designer, install it, and then you'll be presented with a screen like this. Right, so first things first. What we need to do, actually, we also need to consider how we're going to transfer this uh, the files because the good thing about this program is the files that you save is what's called a HRP file a home remote file and it will work on any platform so whatever I create now on this or what I demonstrated last week uh, what I created I could actually just put that onto my Android device, uh, Windows device, as in Windows Mobile, or my uh, iOS, which I showed you anyway, and it will display. The only thing is you've got to take into consideration is the screen size, as the different uh, devices that you're going to be using on, say, for example, a tablet or a phone, the screen size is very slightly, so you've just got to take that into account when you are designing and what you're designing it for. Um, so to transfer that to your mobile or tablet device, um, your best bet is probably using something like either Dropbox or Google Drive or OneDrive or any of these uh, cloud-based programs. So I've used mostly Dropbox. So for example, on my mobile devices, I, I would have I've got Dropbox installed, um, and all it does is it synchronizes with the two devices. And all I do is just go to my device, open up Dropbox, click on the file, and it will open the file. So just like you saw on the iPads. So um, now what we'll do, let's create a new file. So let's get started. Oh, I keep forgetting. Before we do get started, you need to uh, have some sort of design that you want to create. And so what I'm going to do show you is something that I've created on Excel um, which then gives me some uh, like a template or a rough design of what I want to uh, what I want to achieve so what I'm gonna do is basically what I did on the iPads and uh, just to show you how things are done so if I drag this across here so I'm going to be creating a layout for my mobile so so I'm going to be creating so the mobile layout is going to be something like this and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you create your little boxes here for turning your alarm on and off, status buttons, um, how I did the temperature buttons and maybe a water boost button, um, how I did the lights as well and those icons so how, it can, how you can use a button like say for example the gate where not only does it activate the gate, but it also shows us a status. So we're using effectively two different devices, a, a switch actuator and a sensor device, and how to do the camera streams as well. 
So hopefully this uh, video should give you uh, a taste of everything in here um, to do. Okay? Right, so let's go and get started. So let's click on File, New. We'll, um, I'm going to choose Android device because I'm going to create this for my phone. And then we'll click on OK. And then it tells you we need to add the devices in, which we will do. So this is our phone, um, 360, height 740. So we just leave that as default because everything is based on those uh, dimensions. So those are like the base dimensions of, uh, of our mobile handsets. And first thing we need to do is whenever we open the app, it always shows you like this menu page and we don't want that. We want this to go directly into the page that we want to look for. We don't want to be pressing any buttons. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the main page, double click, and this is like the title page. We're going to get rid of it. So on the right hand side, we're going to say is groups visible because that's what it is. So we're going to change that to false. The second thing we're going to do is going to click on menu items, so the, the ellipse, click on that, and then we're going to add a new page. And we'll just call that something like, I don't know, main. And it's going to be a new page. Click on OK. And I'm just going to call that again, main. And we're just going to leave that as a content page. OK. And then just click on exit. Then highlight main XML. And so this is our blank page. So now what happens is every time we load up or open this app, it will always load this page up without having to go through the menu. So it's like an automated page. Okay. So next, what do we do? Now we've uh, go back to our grid layout. So, four, three, two, one. Right, now what we've got is we have our app downloaded, installed. We've got the main page set. Um, now will be a good time to save it. So we'll just hit the save icon. Now we're going to save it to my Dropbox folder. And I'm just going to call this uh, phone remote. And click on save. So now that is saved on my phone. Uh, sorry, that is saved on my Dropbox, which is now accessible on my phone. So we've now got a way. We've now, sorry, start again. We've now saved, created the, downloaded the program, created the file, got the Dropbox installed, and got the main page installed, and now everything's ready. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create the grid layout. So this is a reminder. So it's, um, everything is done in grids, and that just makes life easier because then you can, uh, what we call uh, format everything into the correct spaces. So uh, we're going to start off with, if I click on, let's move this out of the way. Uh, move that out a little bit. So we're going to click on controls, going to click on grid, and we're just going to draw an, uh, uh, an outer grid so everything is enclosed within. And from the side here, we want to make that rather than trying to manually do this, all we do is come to here where it says margin, click on that box and say reset to default. And what it does is it expands it to the full available screen size. And if we call, name this and we can call this the outer grid. So I just press tab and it automatically updated it here. So this way we can keep an eye on the names of everything. We're now going to create our columns. So um, going back to here, we had one and two columns. So we can keep that. 
and then we have one, two, three, and four rows. So let's create our grid structure based on that. To do that, where it says column definitions, click on that, and then put your two columns in. Here tells you the width of each column. So you can either put a number in, or you can leave it as a star and maybe put something like this in. So say, for example, the second column is twice the size of the first column. So it's like in relative terms. But we want to make this the same size. And we want to put our four rows in. So we go across there and we do exactly the same again. Again, row heights. If you wanted to make one row height bigger than the other, you could actually then define a multiple of each one. But at the moment, this is star means all in the same height. So here's our four columns. So here we've allocated this. So we'll start with the cameras. Uh, no, we won't. we're going to carry on with the structure, yeah. So now we want to create our sub-columns like we have here. So what do we do? We create grids inside of these boxes. So let's do a grid within a grid. So come over to here, press the grid. Now we make sure we make our box inside of this box. Go back to the margin, reset to default. So that's now a grid within a grid. And we wanted two columns. If I do that, and can you see how it's now a grid within the grid? So that way, we've got our little icon buttons for our lights here, one and two. So we're going to repeat the process uh, for the other five boxes. So click on grid inside there, reset to default, and add in two columns. So you can see now, look at these grids here. So this one is our floodlight grid. So this is highlighted here. So we can actually call it our floodlights. I can spell floodlights. So that's our floodlight grill box. This grid is going to be our gate and garage. So we can call it gate and garage. So now, rather than going through the whole process and repeating it every so often, what we can actually do, we can actually copy it. And this is the, remember this is the outer grid where everything is positioned inside. We can actually then um, paste our next grid here. And we can do that another four times. So we've got one, two, three, and put. But if you look here, at the moment you can't see it because the name of these has been copied across. So how do we move it from this position to there, 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 and there? Because we know those four copies have been created and they've all landed in this spot. It's easy to do. So what we'll do is we we'll highlight the one that we want to do. And so these were the tank top and middle so if i go to here and name them rename them to tank tm for top and uh, middle and in, uh, if i go down here now it says here look what column this is it's in grid column one so this is column zero because it always starts with a zero and this is column one so we want to move it into the column zero so all we do is put a zero there and tab so it's now moved it to the left column. Row. Currently it's in row 1. So this is row 0, row 1, row 2, and row 3. So we want it to be in row 2. So we then go to grid row, put it to 2. And now it's moved it to here, which is exactly where we want it. Good time. So column span. So this is the original, the outer grid here is the original grid. So that's what we're using to uh, position these. And here, grid column span one and grid row span is one. It means that we're only crossing 
one of these one of these boxes so if I changed this grid row span to two look here it's now going over to two color uh, sorry two rows so we can actually make them a, each one a little bit bigger than the other but we don't want that we want it in one so let's keep it back to the original so all I'm going to do now is go back to this one rename this to tank bottom and boost and we need it in it's going to stay in grid column one but being grid row two so it drops down to here and then the final two is the alarm alarm part off and part which is in the first column so that's column zero and in row two no row three and in row three and finally the alarm full and status fs and same correct column but in row three so now that's there so those are our, our structured so there we are oh i pressed uh, stretched so there we are so these are our grid column structures so now we have our structure created so we've got one box at the top one on the right then we've got our double 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 here like that which is perfect um, so let's move that back to there so I think we'll leave it there for today um, and then next week uh, sorry next session we'll come back and we'll start adding the devices and adding um, icons etc so if you get to this stage absolutely brilliant um, make sure we save it make sure you save it and um, I will we'll call that the end of part one and uh, I'll see you all again in part two bye for now